What's the ultimate goal when we're talking about an event? Attendees. We want people to show up at the event. D365 Marketing gives us a number of tools that we can use to surface this data through a portal and have that information on the website. Now, it should be noted that what you're gonna to see today is based in a demo portal that's giving us a special mechanism that's kind of a faux portal, if you will. It's going to look and feel very much like what you would see in a real Power Apps portal or a CMS, but today's example is really just that high-level overview. You could spice up the pages however you see fit. So what you see here is the inside of the marketing app. We've got our event page and we've talked a little bit about this event as we've gone through some of these videos. We have our conference coming up. Right here, you can see the event URL. We also have a website and form section. And so we've got the ability to get to the event page right from here. I'm gonna go ahead and click that and it's gonna load the event page that we're seeing. And again, this is that sort of simplistic, it's very basic, though very functional, to give us a good idea of how data from the portal can be surfaced pretty seamlessly to the website. So we wanna start by just highlighting some of the key features. And first and foremost, what we see here is a home button up in the top left corner. That's actually gonna bring us to an overview page. So if you think of a hierarchy of, hey, we've got all these events, and then we can drill into each event from there, that's what you're seeing here. Here's all the different events we've got set up, and we wanna drill into our conference page. From here, we can navigate back and forth and kind of dive into all of our different events if we wanted. We have the ability to specify some information. This page though is really here just to show us what it looks like when data starts in, this, in the platform and makes its way onto the web page. So here you see we've got a breakdown of all of our sessions. We've got session tracks and speakers and pass information. And all this data is feeding dynamically from D365 Marketing. So as we make changes in the back end, if you will, the app itself, it's gonna surface. Let me show you what I mean. Here's our day one breakfast and note that it's got an eight o'clock start. Let's go into that specific event on our agenda tab. We've got our calendar breakdown. I'm gonna go ahead and say day one breakfast. I'm gonna edit that record. I actually wanna change this to start at 7.45 a.m. Note that we get a warning. This warning is just telling us we've edited this session, which now begins before the conference actually even starts. So that's calling that out. It's not a showstopper, you can still proceed, but it is a really nice handy feature where they're saying, hey, you set the parameters of the event from A to B, and you've now gone outside of that. And so just so you're aware, that's gonna happen. I'm gonna go ahead and save this. And this change is now syncing with the portal. So here we still got our 8 a.m. If I go ahead and refresh our page, what you're going to see is that session has now been updated on the public facing website. So that's really great. That seamless connectivity between the portal and the back end, so that you can make changes and have them updated really, really quickly. One thing to note as you're using, if you're setting up your own trial, there are a number of things, images in particular. So for example, we have the ability to put our sponsors on the page and those sponsors can have logos. When we change those logos, I've noticed that sometimes those can take some time. Kind of normal when we're dealing with the portal, right? When we have data coming from a backend source being pushed up to the portal, in some scenarios it can take a little while. In one instance, this one in particular, I had to do a full cache clear and reset everything and then come back in and then the new logo is there. So just be warned, it, it doesn't seem to take too, too long, but be warned that that might be a case. So what do some of these things mean? We've got all of our sessions. So this is again, focused on appealing to the attendee or the prospective attendee. We want them to see what the sessions are. We want them to see the different tracks. So we can say, hey, let me, let me see what the day two sessions look like. And there I've now filtered all based on our session track of day two. Here's everything we see. Right? We have a, a page that shows us our speakers, which is a really, really nice overview. And what's really cool about this is if I click on any of these speakers, it's actually going to show me the sessions that they do. And I, I did use plural. It will show me multiple. If this individual has multiple sessions for them, it's going to show us that. I know you're probably looking at the page being like, his picture is there twice, but he's only showing one session. The way this data is loaded is this is actually technically a different speaker demo system, just showing us an image that's been uploaded to multiple people. Pass information. So this is also going to give us details of what the different passes are. And within each pass, we can segment by sessions. If you buy this pass, you get access to these sessions. If you buy this pass, you get access to these sessions and so on and so forth. So some really great features and functions there. I want to show you how this information looks in D365. 
So we're now back in D365 Marketing and we're on our day one breakfast that we edited earlier. So we're gonna go ahead and navigate to the conference record. And from here, we wanna jump over to our agenda tab. So the information here is laid out in a couple different ways. The sessions, as you can see, gives us this handy little calendar view so we can see all of the sessions that are set up and structured here, which is great. We also have a grid view of all the same sessions. So this is just your standard D365 view, right? That you can put your information into and add new sessions. We're gonna do that in just a sec. We also have our tracks, so we can create new tracks from here. And from there, you can open up each track record and then associate the sessions that belong in that track. We can add speaker engagements and add their images on the speaker records and line them up for that. And we can also manage our sponsors. So some of these things have dependencies in other areas. So for a sponsorship, for example, we can add a new sponsorship here, link it back to their record, but then we can go ahead and put their image on that sponsor record. We could also, assuming that we're selling those sponsorships through the system too, we probably have some connections with our D365 sales platform. And so there would be links to perhaps opportunities and things like that. That would all have to be structured and set up in the back end separately, but you could, you could indeed go ahead and do all of that. So what I want to give you a feel for is how to create a new session. And I want to show you how quickly from when we create that, it's going to show up on that portal. So I'm going to go ahead and say new session. It's going to open up a quick create form. We're going to go ahead and plug in our details. We're going to go ahead and publish this to live right out of the gate because we know the event is already live. We want this to show up on the website right away. We're not going to stream this one. We're just going to leave it as no, save and close. It's going to put that into our grid. It's also going to put it into our calendar. So you'll see I set a block here. This is a, a half day session, if you will, at our conference. Let's go back over to our event. And again, remember, I put that as live right away. So it should show up on our calendar immediately. And there we have it. Our Furniture 101 event, or session rather, is now embedded inside of this event. It's, it's going to run from 8 to 12 on day one. So we've got that all set up. So that was quick and easy. If we wanted to remove that from the page, we could go ahead and do that by simply opening up this record, editing it, and we could stop that. And so that would remove it from go live status. So if we wanted to make some changes here, we could, but by virtue of removing that or stopping it, it will now be removed from the website. So if I refresh again, that event or session rather is now removed from the schedule. So nice and speedy in terms of getting the data back and forth between the portal when it comes to this kind of stuff in sessions and whatnot. So I want us to return back to our event and I want to flip over to the website and form because there's a couple things we could do here. One of the things we can do is update that image. So if I flip back to our image, we've got this cityscape, kind of nighttime lights, nice one. Maybe we want to brighten that up a bit and we want to change what that image looks like. So I go ahead and select a file and it's going to open up a library of all the different options we have. Now we've got lots of stuff we could pick from. I'm going to go ahead and pick this one here because I know it's a nice, it's the right size first and foremost, right? These ones would be too big. I want to pick that nice size and this is a nice bright picture. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. It's going to put it here. Let's save that. And now one of the things, again, it's going to take some time. We may or may not see that right away. So let's go ahead and refresh this page. And look at that just in real time. That was not edited. We did not cut out any time. That was pretty quick. But again, sometimes when you do that kind of stuff, it does take some time for the, the image to show up. So that's a much brighter image, right? That, that gives us a really pretty picture as the start of our page. We could also set our registration end date so we can toggle that on and gives us a registration closed. And then we can actually include a message, right? So we could say, oh, we're sorry that this event has, uh, registration has closed. Please see our other events on the events page or something along those lines. This one, we're not gonna set an end date. We can enable CAPTCHA. So in this case, it's off. Now we've just turned it on. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that change. And we're going to come back here and I'm going to refresh and we now see the CAPTCHA is labeled at the bottom. We also have the ability to enable multi-attendee registration so I can allow people to say, yes, I'm going to register five or six people from our company. We can turn that off and make people register one by one. We have a, anonymous registrations, which means individuals would be able to register without having an account. If we were to turn that off, then they would have to have an account in our portal so they can create an account and then they become a contact in our database and have credentials allowing them to sign into that portal, they would sign in and they could register for the event. And then of course we could create leads for these event registrations. So if we wanted to follow up with these people, we could create leads or we could say no and just build a segment on this group and go from there. Important to note, you don't have to change any of these, that's totally fine, but these are the capabilities that exist. So it's important to, to call these out. 
as you see at the bottom, we actually have the ability to build in custom registration fields. This would allow us to build out specific questions that we want to ask our attendees. So as you can see, overall, there's a lot of great features and functions available here in D365 Marketing from an events perspective. We've got this great page that allows us to interact and, and make information available with our potential attendees. And that's ultimately, as we said at the top of the video, that's ultimately the goal. We want people to register with the, for the event. So the more that we can give them so that they can understand what this event is going to look like and feel like, the more comfortable they'll be registering. If you have any questions about anything you've seen in this video here or anything about the Dynamics 365 or Microsoft 365 applications, please reach out to C5 Insight. We would be happy to chat with you. We hope you've enjoyed this video and we hope you have a great day.